is our final message for this morning, so I'm just going to get straight into it. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Father in heaven, open thou our eyes that we might behold wondrous things out of thy law. Teach us, Lord, through your Holy Spirit. And Lord, may we get a fresh understanding of the, of the love of Christ for us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I want us to begin in the book of Luke chapter 5. In the book of Luke chapter 5, God brings out a principle that I believe carries on from what the two brothers shared in the beginning. What, what I wanted to share and finish off on today is the difference between faith and feeling. Because brothers and sisters, we live in a time where many people say they have faith. But the Bible is going to make something clear to us today that there is a difference between faith and feeling. Now Luke chapter 5, I want, to, want us to look at one small story. We're going to have a look at two passages today. Amen? Two passages. Luke chapter 5. Are we there? Say amen when you guys are there. Luke chapter 5. Beginning in verse 18, Luke chapter 5, the Bible says, And behold, men brought in a bed, a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in, and to lay him before him. And when they could not find what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went up on the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before who? Before who? So, who's, who, so who did they bring him to? Jesus, amen. Now it says in verse 20, and when he saw their faith. Did it say when he heard their faith? Did it say when he heard them say the name of Jesus? No, it said when he saw their faith. It's very important because faith without works is dead. James 2 verse 18 says, show me thy faith without thy works and I will show thee my faith by my works. So the Bible is making it clear that very clearly that Jesus saw their faith. Amen. Now catch this verse 21. And the scribes and Pharisees began to reason saying, who is that which speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive what? Sins but God alone. But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, what reason ye in your hearts whether, whether it is easier to say thy sins be forgiven or to say rise up and Walk, verse 24, but that ye may know that the Son of Man has power upon earth to what? To do what? To forgive sins. He, um, he said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise, take up thy couch and what? Go into thine house, verse 25, key, don't miss this. And immediately, what did it say? Immediately, did it say two hours later? Did it say five minutes later? It said, immediately, so straight away. So immediately or straight away, the man rose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying who? Now catch this. This is so important because here we have a man with palsy. Here we have Jesus who was the great physician or the great healer. Amen. And here we have these people. They see that there's a great multitude surrounding the house and that does not stop them. This is so important because you might see obstacles and say, nah, there's too much things in my way from exercising faith in Jesus. The Bible just made it clear, even though there was a multitude surrounding the house and stopping them, nothing stopped them from going by faith. And so catch this, they then brought the man down through where? The rooftop. And what did Jesus say? After the scribes and the Pharisees were murmuring, Jesus said that you might know that the Son of Man has power to do what? Forgive sins. Then what did he do after that? He said to the man that was sick, Arise, do what? Take up your couch and go to your house. I don't want you to miss this. The very reason why Jesus healed the man was that so, he, so that Jesus could inspire confidence in a physical healing that the man could see. Amen? Now, don't miss this. When we think about spiritual healing, when you ask for forgiveness, do you see your legs start twindling with sparkles? When you, let's say, like you've sinned, and you say, God, forgive me. It's not that marvelous, right? Because what Jesus was trying to show is that if the man could see his power in healing, he could see, that would inspire his mind with confidence that Jesus could heal him in his sin, in his heart that he cannot see. Does that make sense? 
So this is the key reason why Jesus gave the healing message. Now go to the book of John chapter 5 as we finish. John chapter 5. The reason why I'm doing this message, faith versus feeling, is because we are living in a time where the devil was going hard and he is going rampant. The Bible makes it clear in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. So don't miss this point. The first point is that Jesus gave the healing so he could inspire confidence in the man so that he could believe that Jesus could spiritually heal him. Because the man was what? Stuck in sin. All have sinned, right? So don't miss this point, John chapter 5, as we close. Are we there? In the book of John chapter 5, I want us to bring out the second point. It says in verse 2, Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, what? Bethesda, having five porches, verse 3. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was what? Made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Now catch this, verse 5. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity or a sickness for thirty and eight years. Now don't miss this. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, will you be made whole? Now, question, is that a closed question or an open question? Closed, right? The answer only requires a yes or a no. Notice his response. It says in verse 7, the impotent man answered, yes, no, no. He's given an open answer. Jesus only asked you, do you believe it? Yes or no? But here he gives an open answer. He says, the man answered, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Now catch this. Did Jesus say, are you, what, why are you not healed? Did Jesus say, for what excuse are you not made whole? Did Jesus say, what's the reason why you're not made whole? Jesus, do you want to be made whole? All he had to say was yes. And now catch this. He says this. There's no one, when I am coming, there is no one to put me in the pool. And Jesus said, rise, take up your bed and walk. Verse 9. Immediately, the man was what? Made whole and took up his bed and what? Walked and on the same day was the Sabbath. Now, I want us to finish on this point. What was the reason why Jesus in Luke chapter 5 healed the man with the palsy? So that he could believe in Jesus for the power to forgive his sins. Now catch this. Jesus now brings this point that you and I, amen, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But praise the Lord for 1 John 1.9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all sin. But brothers and sisters, Jesus says, I am willing to forgive you, but you've got to believe I can do it. He's saying, listen, if you confess your sins. Now catch this. Have you ever been in a situation where you've fallen in sin and you don't feel like Jesus will forgive you? You fall down, you do a great work for how many weeks? Week after week, you come to church, sing songs, you do all the hospitable works, but one day you sin. And you feel down. And you say to your mind, how can Jesus forgive me, O oh filthy sinner? And you say in your heart, listen, I don't feel like Jesus can forgive me. The man could have said this, Jesus, heal my legs, make me feel like I'm whole, and then I'll believe your word. Jesus could have said, listen, make, the man could have said, make my legs, look, listen, the man had no feeling in his legs. So he had no feelings to go by. He could have said, Jesus, make me feel like I'm made whole, and then I'll believe I'm made whole. Did he say that? No. He just immediately woke up and he got up and walked. The lesson is this, listen, faith is not feeling. 
Why? Because the Bible says, catch this, why would you need feeling when God's word is sure? The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. When God speaks a word, it happens. God, does, God is not man that he should lie. God is not a man. Don't miss this. The reason why God does not want us to go by feelings is because he's saying, listen, why are you going to go by your inconsistent feelings when you can go by my consistent word? Amen. Jesus, do you know that? Jesus can't lie. How do I know that? Isaiah 55, 11 says, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall accomplish, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing where I sent it. When Jesus said, let there be light. When God said, there was light. So listen, if you're stuck in a sin and you, you are saying, Jesus, I want forgiveness. Do not wait to feel forgiven. Because if you wait to feel forgiven, you're never going to get that peace that only comes by faith. Catch this. Faith is not feeling. Faith is yours and mine to exercise. Joyful feeling and the blessing is God's to give. Our job is faith, not feeling. Because brothers and sisters, if all you do, if all I do is go by how I feel, what happens when I don't feel like studying my Bible? What happens when I don't feel like praying in the morning? What happens when there's someone next to me on the bus stop, someone at work that Jesus is saying, listen, saints, minister to them. And I don't feel that way. What am I going to do? I'm going to go by feeling, not by faith. Jesus says, without faith, it's impossible to please me. And I want to make this point clear as we close. Jesus wants us to see, listen, you do not need to run by your feelings. Why? Because your feelings are no match for my word. Do you know God can't lie? Do you know how I know that? Because when he speaks, it what? It is. So if God said, Orion, you have an afro, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to have an afro. If he said, listen, Gerard, you've got Jerry, you've got red hair, guess what's going to happen? He's going to have red hair. If Jesus says, you're forgiven, guess what's happened? You're forgiven. And so I want us to, to encourage us. Jesus says, listen, faith is not feeling. Faith is believing. That what I say I will do, I will do it regardless of how you feel. Because when I was down in the dumps, I got baptized into the church and I was falling into sin. What was going to pull me back to my feet? Not myself. Not my strength. Because the Bible says my righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And our, our hope is this today. Listen. By faith, we can do much. And it's God's word that is our strength. Whatever you go through, I want you to remember this as we pray. No matter how you feel, don't ever let feelings govern you. Because the devil can make you feel down. Jesus says, believe it because I said it. And let's pray as we close. Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Thank you that you are not a God that tells us to go by feelings. Thank you for the faithful word you've given us. Thank you for the word that promises to do exactly what it says it will do. And thank you for the hope that we have, that anchor that we have in Jesus. Keep us, Lord, in thy word. Give us faith, yea, greater faith. And may we go by faith from ground to higher ground. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.